Hey all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and this is the next comprehensive reading order in Collected Editions, The Thunderbolts. So please stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, I do want to take this time to thank our patrons for voting for this. It was very close. It was either this or a flash comprehensive reading order. So if you want to jump in and put your vote in to our Patreon, all of that information is in the description down below. By the way, some of the books that you're seeing on this video have been released in other formats like standard hardcovers or ultimate editions. Or for example, the Civil War Thunderbolts book has been re-released with the Heroes for Hire and Thunderbolts made into one. So that's something to keep in mind, but this is the way that I own them. Now, without further ado, let's get started. And of course, we're gonna start with the very beginning, the Thunderbolts Classics Volume 1. So this is Thunderbolts Classic Volume 1. This has been reprinted twice already. There is an upcoming omnibus, but as of this video, we don't know the contents of that omnibus yet, which is really exciting. Um, one more important thing. I will be talking about a spoiler, and it's kind of a big spoiler, at the end of issue one that kind of defines who the characters of the Thunderbolts are but I there is no I've, I have thought about it and there is no other way around it I have to talk about it so um, uh, the other thing I will mention is that the content of the books will be uh, down at the bottom in little boxes that way I can just focus on the book and not tell you exactly what's in there I let the little boxes tell you uh, so this is what kicks off this new era it's uh, by Kurt Busiek and Mark Bagley. So pretty much when the Marvel heroes, like the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, were thrown into what I like to call the Image Universe, or what everybody else likes to call the Heroes Reborn Universe, a new set of heroes had to step up and fill in their shoes. And for months, Marvel were like promoting these new characters as a new team of heroes. And I remember seeing the promotions, I'm like, I don't need new heroes, this is dumb, I'm gonna go read X-Men. And it's really cool because we really thought the Avengers were dead. We thought the Fantastic Four were dead, at least in the 616 universe, right? Because of Onslaught. So literally when we were introduced to all these new characters like Citizen V, uh, Mach 5, Techno, Songbird, Atlas, and Meteorite, Marvel just pulled the rug from under us and they revealed who these heroes were. Now, if you don't care about spoilers, or if you've read this before, you know what I'm going to talk about. If you do care about spoilers and for some reason have stayed away from spoilers for over 20 years, turn away now and enjoy it for the first time and then come back after you've read it. Okay. Everybody was warned. So, this is one of the coolest twists of any comic book and that is the revelation as to who these characters really are. So, you meet these new heroes in the first issue and they fought the Wrecking Crew. And what's cool is that at the end of the first issue, it's revealed that Citizen V was none other than Baron Zemo, and all the other new heroes that we just met were nothing but villains. And it's his master plan to just fool everybody into thinking that they're heroes. And that was such an awesome, like, I don't know how the hell they kept it quiet for so long. I absolutely loved it. So here is their actual first appearance in the Incredible Hulk 449, which is collected in this particular collection here. And here's a new character is introduced, Jolt, as early as the pages of issue four. So this is mainly just Kurt Busiek with these characters here. So let's look at volume two. All right. Now that we know the Thunderbolt's true identity, so is the rest of the world gonna learn who they are because they were the original masters of evil. So now that the whole world knows who they are, because during this volume, the original heroes are back from the Heroes Reborn era. So you have the Avengers and the Fantastic Four coming back. And of course, they also, oh, and this is also the, I think this is a crossover with the Heroes for Hire issue, yeah. And Heroes for Hire at the time was Luke Cage and Iron Fist. This begins the Heroes War. I love that Kurt Busiek just has this deep history and understanding of the Marvel Universe. So here are the original 616 Marvel superheroes returning to their proper universe. And they're confronting these new so-called heroes. But they know who their real identities are. Here is Volume 3. So by now you're probably asking yourself, 
Has this team of villains posing as heroes truly been reformed? And even if they are, will anyone believe them, right? Especially uh, the heroes that just came back. Well, there's one person that does believe them, right? And it's this guy right here. The guy that used to be a villain himself turned hero, and that is Hawkeye. And things are about to change uh, towards the end of this volume and the beginning of the next volume, which I'll talk about. And I'm sure by now you've probably figured it out that this is kind of Marvel's version of Suicide Squad, right? Where you have villains that are doing heroic things and the lineup is constantly changing. Not so much towards the beginning, but when Fabian Iniesta takes over, um, the lineup does start to change a lot. And before I talk about Fabian Iniesta's run, I do want to point out that Kurt Busiek, my goodness, this... This whole run was phenomenal. Like that, he, these characters that he created, and how he was able to capture the villainous side of them so perfectly, and also made me believe that these are actually new characters. I, I love that about him. He's got such a deep understanding of the Marvel universe, like all the history of it. And I've always mentioned that there's only a handful of people that can do it, that have that deep understanding. There's the new Citizen V. And there's Baron Zemo. I love that all it's all these twists and turns too throughout this series. Oh, and this is the crossover with the Avengers, which Kurt Busiek was writing at the time. I think this is this takes place during issue twelve. Love that he had Firestar and Justice on that team. And this is where things get a little confusing because of the name change. And that's why I love making videos like this. So this is Hawkeye and the Thunderbolts Volume One, but it's literally the next book you should read. It has the contents of issues 23 to 37, where the last one ended in issue 22. So yes, by now we have a new leader of the Thunderbolts, and that is old Clint Barton. Well, that's right, forgot about a boy US agent dropping in from time to time, because he plays another role later on. But now we have, yes, Clint Barton. Who else is gonna believe this group of villains, like I said? Well, it's gotta be the guy that used to be a villain. And now the team has to decide who to follow, either Citizen V or do they follow Hawkeye. And this is also where we say goodbye to Kurt Busiek during this particular volume. So he his last issue was issue 33. And by issue 34, we have a new writer. And that is none other than Fabian Iciesa, one of my all-time favorite writers. And also another guy that has a deep understanding of Marvel history and their characters. So I was really happy with that change. Mark Bagley is still on artwork, though. That hasn't changed. He is going to be joined with some fill-in artists from time to time. So let's look at the next book. And that is, of course, Hawkeye and the Thunderbolts, Volume 2. I'm not really sure what the reasoning was behind the name change. I don't know if Hawkeye was more popular during the time that these were released because of the Avengers movies. Maybe that's why they did it. So this collects, sadly, this is the final trade of the classic run because they're about to go through a huge and major change. Oh, Scourge shows up. There's so much like Easter eggs for those people that have followed Marvel for a long time, for those people reading Avengers. Um, there's so much payoff in these. And then also for people that have never read um, any of those classic Avengers stories because there's so much brand new things that baby Nisiesa brings to the table that will keep you just lured and keep making you turn those pages so this one to me just had it all there's so many guest stars you have Black Widow Sandman you have the big crossover with the Avengers and I mean big it's like a five ten issue crossover event and sadly like I said this is the last of the trade paperbacks that we have of the classic years um, I think one more would do it because 51 through 75 are not collected anywhere uh, and 75 being Fabian ECS's final issue. So let's look at where we go after this. And that is Thunderbolts How to Lose. This is an old trade paperback only printed once. A lot of these, by the way, have been reprinted. Some of them are out of print, so keep that in mind. So how do I describe John Acurdi's and Francisco Ruiz's Velasco's Thunderbolts? Well, <laughs> I guess it was an attempt at something different. That's for sure. Um, yeah, last minute they told Femi and he said, hey, you're off the book. And he was like, what? Okay. And they got this new guy to do it. And 
like you can probably tell the original cast is gone no one here remains from the original thunderbolts and it's really like their version of fight club and i don't think i have to let you know that the series was canceled in issue 81 and that was all that was said about thunderbolts before we got a new set of thunderbolts and that all begins here in the pages of thunderbolts one step forward and really to be fair it really begins in the pages of avengers disassembled so during the events of avengers disassembled and you can probably tell this is kind of a take on that cover of avengers disassembled uh Femini Siesa comes back to write a the crew of ex villains playing good guys and you see a lot of familiar faces some new characters join the team and this time he is joined by artist Tom Grumet. He's another really fast artist. Now, I grew to love him because of his run on Teen Titans. And like I said, all of this stuff happens after the events of Avengers Disassembled. That's where we get the new Avengers. And it's got a new numbering system, but don't worry. It's going to go back to the old numbering system. So here we have Modern Marvels. This is Volume 2 of the new Thunderbolts. And one thing I didn't mention was joining some of the original cast. Now we have Radioactive Man, Speed Demon, Blizzard, uh, Joystick, and Janis Vell. And Janis Vell, of course, is the son of the original Captain Marvel. And he is now calling himself Photon during this time. Uh, Tom Grumet is joined here by, I think, Bill Sienkiewicz does some of the internal artwork here, too. So it's not just Tom Grumet. We have a new swordsman, and there's an issue here that crosses over with House of M. Yes, this one here. And because of Fabian Iciesa's just also understanding of the Marvel Universe and its history, and of course he's written, or he wrote many, many years of X-Men, uh, he was able to write that in there pretty good. Like, I like the characters that he uses for his House of M crossover. All right, Volume 3 of New Thunderbolts. But don't worry, they're about to take that new off to confuse you even further. And it had to happen. That's cover spoils it all. We have the new Avengers versus the new Thunderbolts. And it's all due to a psychic misunderstanding, of course. And remember when I said that we're going to go back to the original numbering system? Well, this collects issues 13 through 18. I know I wasn't going to talk about it, but I think it's important to talk about this particular uh, volume because it also collects issue 100. So now we go back to the original numbering system. And I'm sure... Oh, Rick Leonardi has a fill-in issue here, too. I'm sure some of you are wondering, why the hell does Marvel and DC always do that? Why do they go back and restart... Uh, with number ones and that's easy that's because everybody knows that that number one issue that first issue sells a lot more than like an issue 12 or an issue 25 or an issue 100 believe it or not so that's why they do it but and then eventually they go back to the original numbering system so to boost sales of course the thunderbolts are thrown into every crossover event you saw them in house of m and now they are here in civil war and who is Baron Zemo going to help out? By the way, I am not revealing any of these characters other than saying Baron Zemo. But who's behind the mask? I will leave that up to you to find out who this version of Baron Zemo is and why there's more than one. And of course, they side with Tony Stark. Tony Stark hires them to go after some heroes. And come on, these are old villains. Of course, they're going to love doing that. And that's what they do. Still, we got Tom Grumet on artwork along with Fabian Iciesa. Next up, we have the Guardian Protocols. So, the Grandmaster shows up. He's a character from the Avengers. And I'm sure if you've seen the Thor Ragnarok movie, you know who I'm talking about. He looks a little bit different than the comic book version. He's a blue guy. But he comes back to Earth and plans to release an energy force across the planet that will lead to victory in this cosmic game that he loves to play of good versus evil. So this is in the aftermath of Civil War. And things are about to change for the Thunderbolts. Not only the comic book, but also the creative team. Because this is the last volume that Fabian Iciesa does. Now he is given a chance to finish out some plot points that he started here in issue 108. And... That's why I love doing these comprehensive reading orders. So if you want to follow that story from issue 108, Fabian Iciesa and Tom Grumet 
get to finish it out in this particular mini series called Baron Zemo Born Better. So get this trade paper back, but make sure to read Guardian Protocols first. Okay, Civil War is over. And we have a new creative team along with a lineup of new characters. Uh, Warren Ellis steps into the writing duties of Thunderbolts. And he is joined by Mike Del Toto Jr. Who, at this point, I think he was going through an experimental phase of his artwork. Like using a lot of realistic actors and things like that. Because I remember just Norman Osborn who plays a character like right here. Sorry. Looks just like Tommy Lee Jones. And I'm sure he modeled him right after Tommy Lee Jones. So this is pretty much uh, the new cast of the Thunderbolts. It's pretty cool. Like, uh, one thing I will say about Ellis' run, like going back and rereading it, it's interesting because I didn't see it at the time as they were coming out, but he's able to use the Civil War and the demonization of Captain America to just comment on both the American political system and then just the hyperbolic American media that we have. And I never noticed that, like, in the first read-through, but only uh, the second time that I read it. Because I don't go back and read everything. I just hit a couple points. But Warren Ellis' run I always thought was pretty interesting, so I figured I'd go back and just read his 12 issues because he didn't last very long. And this is the second trade paperback, as he didn't last very long. Now, there is a Penance trade paperback that you could read in between these two volumes, uh, but I'm just not a big fan of Penance. I always hated that character, mainly because of what he did to Bob, uh, Robbie. So here's the new lineup of the Thunderbolts. I didn't go through them, but you have the new Swordsman. Uh, Penance, who used to be Speedball, and because of the events, I'm not going to reveal anything, but what happens in Civil War, Radioactive Man, Moonstone, uh, Songbird, and Venom. Now this is the Mac Venom, the Scorpion Venom, and I, I am, no, never mind, can't talk about that, but yes, it's not Eddie Brock Venom, and there's a reason why. So the first arc established the new team in a new direction. Now the villains, or ex-villains, <laughs> have returned to their mountain headquarters to regroup after their first mission, and there is a quartet of psychics attacking them and turning the place into hell for them. So this one is just mainly I want to focus on this beautiful, I hope one day this gets an oversized hardcover collection, artwork by Mike Del Toto Jr., who is just killing it here. Besides his take on Tommy Lee Jones, Norman Osborn, I think he did a phenomenal job with the art. Another tie-in, and we say goodbye to Warren Ellis, and hello temporarily to Christos Gage. Like Christos Gage, I thought he was a very underrated writer. He did a lot of stuff for Avengers Academy and Avengers The Initiative. But this is during that little period where Warren Ellis was off the book. They were trying to find a new writer. Secret Avengers, I'm sorry, Secret Invasion. This is the Secret Invasion tie-in, by the way. Was about to ch shake up things again and they were going to get a new writer. And this kind of sets up the events of another series that was happening at the time which I'll talk about here in a second, because I think it's important. It's not a necessary read, but it's important to see where some of these characters end up going. Now, let's talk about that series. And that is Dark Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis, joined by Mike Del Toto Jr., who, of course, was with Warren Ellis. So some of the characters from Warren Ellis's Thunderbolts leaped into the pages of this. Um, and it's kind of a mockery, a twist of the classic Avengers lineup. So you have Wolverine, who's the Ken, Miss Marvel, who's Moonstone, Spider Man, who's that uh, Mac Duggan Venom. Um, you have Hawkeye, who's really Bullseye. And on top of that, you have Norman Osborn leading them, not under the guise of the Green Goblin but under like a mashup of a Captain America in an Iron Man outfit or suit uh, that originally came from a variant cover. But anyway, I'm going on way too long about that. And that is Iron Patriot. And they're joined by Ares and the Sentry to make up the Dark Avengers. Now there's a second volume, this one right here, that collects those missing issues, issues seven and eight, because this is more to do with a crossover with X-Men during the time. And that's during the Utopia stuff. So, let's go back to Thunderbolts, though. It's not necessary reading, by the way, 
But I do like to add it in there in case you were wondering what happened to some of those characters that were in Warren Ellis' Thunderbolts. Now we have Thunderbolts burning down the house. This is Andy Diggle's first run with these characters. Uh, also, he, he didn't last very long either. So the team is now, let me see, we got Black Widow, not Natasha Romanoff, but Yelena Belova, the second or third Black Widow, really. Uh, she's the one that's going to be in the movie. That is uh, Natasha's sister in the movie. We have Ghost, Paladin, Scourge, Headsman, Ant-Man, uh, not Scott Lang, but we have Eric O'Grady. Uh, I think, was it Robert Kirkman that wrote his series too? Uh, Mr. X and Grizzly. Those are the characters now that are the Thunderbolts. So like I said, the lineup's always changing. Here's the next book, Deadpool Thunderbolts Dark Reign. What can I say about this? Uh, Deadpool wants to assassinate Norman Osborn, who is still overseeing the Thunderbolts project. So he has to fight the Thunderbolts. This one is has issues by Daniel Way in here. And Andy Diggle still writing it. So, taking us to the final Andy Diggle volume. So, literally, he had two vol well, three, I guess, if you count that Deadpool one. But this is Widowmaker. This is a Norman Osborn versus Nick Fury story. So, you have some returning characters from the original cast coming back. Um, and you still have the new cast of Thunderbolts. And <laughs> what can I say about this without spoiling much? I don't really like to spoil things for people during these reading orders, but sometimes it's a little difficult to talk about some of the things that went down. But I realize that every comic book is somebody's first comic book. So I get that. They labeled this as one of those things that nothing will ever be the same. And when it's all said and done, yeah, not really. Things were changed immediately uh, with Nick Fury. We were led to believe something happened to Nick Fury in these pages and... Um, yeah, nothing will ever be the same. No sure how many times we've heard that before. A lot of the artwork in these pages is done by Miguel Sepulveda and also Pop Man. So this finishes out Andy Diggle's run on Thunderbolts. And I think it's fun. Yeah, this is his final issue, issue 136. And 137 is actually written by Rick Remender, who just stepped in to do a Luke Cage story. So, yes, Luke Cage is about to play a big role in Thunderbolts. But not before we're part of another crossover event. Yes, this is Siege, the Avengers um, crossover event that happened with Thor and the Dark Avengers and ended the Dark Avengers run. Now we do have a new creative team, well, a new writer, rather. That is Jeff Parker. He's still joined by Miguel Sipulbeva. Uh, probably... You know, Jeff Parker, to me, is one of the most underrated writers of our time. He's still writing books from time to time. Uh, but it's funny that he's able to take this book in the middle of a crossover. Uh, like, they're, literally, their mission is to go and secure a relic from Asgard during the siege event. That's their mission. But he's able to introduce his own little, little elements of stories that will come to play later on in his run. Taking us to Thunderbolts, Cage. That's the name of this one, no numbering. That's why I like doing these videos. And I wish I had someone doing videos like this when I first started collecting them. And that's partly the reason why I started doing videos like this. Now, Jeff Parker is joined by one of my favorite artists that I think this is the first work I ever saw him do, and that is Kev Walker. The lineup has changed, so we have another team leader, we have another headquarter, and this time the headquarters is in the raft, which served as a prison in the Marvel Universe. And of course we have another team shakeup. So now we have the Juggernaut, Mach 5, Fixer, Crossbones, Ghost, Moonstone, and Man-Thing. That is the new Thunderbolts team. Juggernaut and Man-Thing in one book, all being led by Luke Cage. Oh, hell yes. How is this not going to work? More crossovers, Shadowland. Uh, now, if you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, and notifications button. And yeah, chime in. Let me know what kind of other reading orders I should put on the poll for our patrons to vote on. Let Leave those comments down below. There's a lot to 
to cover, that's for sure. So, the Clan Shalvey now joins Jeff Parker and Kev Walker. Now, that is the creative team until, I think, the end of Jeff Parker's run. So, the Avengers pay a visit to the raft, of course, to evaluate the Thunderbolts. Because Norman Osborn is no longer in charge of the Thunderbolts. I'll leave it at that. And, of course, that leads to a brutal fight with the Juggernaut, Ghost, and Crossbones. Because why not? We knew that was going to happen. Showcasing again this awesome Kev Walker artwork. I do want to point out that issues 148 and 149 are also in this Daredevil omnibus, Shadowland. Here is Violent Rejection. Don't let that Greg Land cover scare you. It's still Kev Walker. It's just, I think they really like Greg Land doing the covers for some. But look at that. that that's some awesome kaiju kick-ass action right there. So this issue really focuses on Luke Cage trying to recruit new people. There's my boy, U.S. agent. Things are about to change for him, too. Uh, so he tries to recruit Hyperion because he wants that raw power, as he puts it. And he also tries to recruit Satana uh, to go and help them on their next mission because they need somebody with magical abilities. And Hellstrom and Doctor Strange make an appearance in the, that in volume, too. Satana. What's Thunderbolts without another crossover? This is Fear Itself. This was a Thor crossover event. I don't think this one got a lot of hype. It was never collected in an omnibus or oversized hardcover. So I know it didn't get a lot of hype. Um, a little bit of a spoiler here based on the cover. But Juggernaut ends up being the wielder of one of those weapons. And the raft during this particular point is destroyed so a lot of the super villains are on the loose so by the end of this volume a lot of things are about to change and i'll talk about that be, uh in the next volume here but just because <laughs> the juggernaut needed to be beefed up and then eventually call ah oh, man never mind um uh, let's let's talk about the next volume and that is the great escape and I wasn't really making fun of the Juggernaut holding a hammer like that being uh, Jeff Parker's fault. That was completely editorial mandate. So that's more to do with them than Jeff Parker's story. So here is Thunderbolts The Great Escape. Now we have some time displays Thunderbolts. The team's about uh, to shake up some. So we have the return of Baron Zemo. I'm not going to tell you which version he is. Uh, we have Mr. Hyde. We have uh, some new team members that join the team. Because like I said, there are some time displaced Thunderbolts running around. And there's a really cool yeah, team up with the invaders as they're fighting uh, Red Skull. This is what probably one of my favorite stories. And I don't hear a lot of people talk about this one. And here is Like Lightning. And I was mentioning how I don't hear a lot of people talk about this run right here. Yeah, because uh, towards the end of Jeff Parker's run, I think is when he really got the best of his stories out. And it's about to change. the Not only the lineup, but also the title of the book is about to change. So you have more time traveling stories and one last hoorah before the big shakeup. So this takes us back to the original concept of the Thunderbolts when they were originally formed to protect the planet because we had missing heroes. Uh, but now we know that they were villains in disguise. And now the modern Thunderbolts are traveling back to those days to shake things up. And man, this story is so good. I'm not going to flip through here to ruin it for you. But in case you haven't read it, this is probably one of my favorite Jeff Parker stories. Now we're looking at Dark Avengers. Stay with me. This is the end is the beginning. Even though it's a new title, it's still the same creative team. It's still the same story. Still Jeff Parker, Kef Walker, DeClan Shavley. And yes, so Thunderbolts issue 174 ended the run of Thunderbolts, but the story wasn't over. Now the story continues over here into Dark Avengers. Um, because we had a. That's why I mainly showed the Norman Osborn Dark Avengers. And then I wanted to showcase this. God, I love the way Kev Walker draws man thing. But you have the time displaced Thunderbolts. You have the Luke Cage team in the present. And then you have the replacement Dark Avengers team, which is these cast of characters here. And that's what this focuses on. And I'll talk about who they are here in a second. 
Dark Avengers Masters of Evil, the final volume of the second startup to Thunderbolts, ends with a Dark Avengers title. So by now, the Thunderbolts have changed again. The lineup has changed, even though they're Dark Avengers. I know it gets a little confusing, but believe me, it's the same story. You have Scar, the son of Hulk. You have Trickshot, the Decapitator, uh, Ragnarok. You have U.S. Agent still hanging out with them. So that is the lineup, and this is where everything ends for the second time around. And Thunderbolts are no more for a while. Until this run right here. Thunderbolts, no quarter. This is the 2012 series that started by Daniel Way. There's Steve Dillon on artwork. And this features the Red Hulk, who's leading the Thunderbolts. Uh, and the Thunderbolts are made up of Deadpool, because of course he was selling books at the time, Punisher, and Elektra. That's pretty much it. And their first mission is brutal. And honestly, here's the second book. This is the final Daniel Way story along with Charles Soule starting the new run with issue 12. Honestly, what I was going to say about volume 1, this is probably the most least memorable run of Thunderbolts to me is the Daniel Way stuff. I think I appreciate what Charles Soule tried to do though and picking up the kind of mess that yes, that Daniel Way started. Cause I, don't, I, I think Electra's brother plays a role in this. I really can't remember much of this and I think I've read it twice. So so we have an Infinity tie-in with Volume 3. Phil Noto doing the artwork. And now we have Charles Soule writing the main storyline. I think this would have been so much better if they had just let Charles Soule start off writing it and picking out his characters. Terry Bogard. Pretty much, it's just the red team that I think it was in the issues of Red Hulk that we first saw them. It's not dialogue heavy. I, I do remember that. But let's look at the next couple volumes. Now we have No Mercy. Thunderbolts No Mercy, which is volume four. These are actually, yeah, numbered. A couple of these are out of print. I know because I had to buy them again. Because I thought I had them. I may have gotten rid of them, but I was like, wait, I'm doing a reading order. Shoot, I guess I need to get those again. Um, see, I don't want to cheat you guys out of this. So, yes, now the Thunderbolts are joined by Ghost Rider. And this is the final. Actually, the artwork in this is awesome. It's mainly uh, Carlo Barberi, who did a lot of the artwork in Daniel Way's Deadpool run. So I'm a big fan of his art. He's got a Mark Brooks like anime style to it. It's kind of gorish and brutal, but not the best run of Thunderbolts. But this does finish out Charles Soule's run. Taking us to Thunderbolts, Punisher vs. the Thunderbolts by Ben Acker and Ben Blacker. But Barbary's still doing the artwork, which I really like. So, yes, this final issues of Thunderbolts right here, 27 through 32, are nothing but a huge fight with the Punisher. You can see why these stories to me are forgettable. And it also includes the annual. And now Ghost Rider and Red Leader have joined the team. And that's all I really can say about that. So the Thunderbolts were canceled. And once again, for the last time, as of now, as of this video, were brought back in 2016 with this short-lived series. But I really like this. This brought back a lot of my characters that I really enjoyed. And we had Winter Soldier. So you had Mach X, you had Moonstone, you had The Fixer, and you had Atlas. And they're all joined by Bucky Barnes here. And that is Winter Soldier. Uh, Jim Zub is now the main writer on the book. And the artwork here is drawn by John Malin. Now, many years ago when I had a website, I reviewed a book by John Malin. I can't remember what it was. He did the fill-in art for like an issue of Cable or something maybe. But I compared his artwork to that of Rob Liefeld. And he commented on my review and said, uh, Man, I've always seen myself as a poor man's chap yap. So, I mean, his art style has changed a little bit. I dug it. It's action-packed and gets the job done. Which brings us to the final trade paperback of Thunderbolts. Um, again, Jim Sub finishing out this series. This is issue 7 through 12. And, man, 
it was short-lived, but I really enjoyed it for what it was. I really like seeing a lot of my old characters back. I love, yes, this prologue right here, which is written by Kurt Busiek and drawn by Mark Bagley. How could you not love this? The guys that started it all. I love this little prologue. I'm not going to show all of it, but then go back to this right here. So, who knows? Maybe, you know, after this video airs, they'll announce a new Thunderbolts team with a new creative team. And we'll actually find out what the contents of that omnibus will be. But that is it. This was the final one. No, no going back. Whew! We did it. All right. Now, if you want any of these books that are still in print, check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the Thunderbolts in Collected Edition. Please let me know if I left anything out, or if you have any other questions, leave those comments down below. I cannot wait for that omnibus. I can't wait to see the solicits to see what it's going to collect. But until then, this is the way to get it, or the way to get it if you only get trade paperbacks. Again, thank you to our patrons for voting for this particular title. This was a lot of fun. So the next poll will be going up shortly. And if you're wondering how to join our Patreon, that is all in the description down below. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.